Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Another video in the anatomy series. I hope you're enjoying these videos. So do let me know what you think in the comment section below. Your feedback is what sort of helps me develop these videos as we move forward. So I do appreciate you taking the time. Today's video is all about this little bone here. And it is the navicular bone or the distal sesamoid bone. And it has two surfaces. It has this surface, which is the flexor surface. And it also has this surface, which is the articular surface. So two different surfaces as it sits in this dip joint or the coffin joint or the distal interphalangeal joint. So as you get P2 articulating with P3 and if I just get the articular surface of this bone, so it sits in to this joint here, tucks in nicely to P2 and, and, um, and forms that complex joint here. And it has a, 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 quite a, a range of motion, this joint. Oh, it did do. So there's quite a lot of movement in this joint. It sits in just behind here. And um, you can probably see the little facet, which is this area here, a little facet along the top. And that basically f helps in the articulation with P2. So it just fills that area. And just below it, you can see per perforated foramini for the blood supply to come into this bone. Uh, you can see that along the front as well, very small little holes. Uh, but along the front here is where you would find the distal impar ligament. The distal impar ligament is what attaches um, the distal sesamoid bone to P3 as it tucks in just there. So the distal impar ligament would just be in here and it would attach into this semilunar crescent area on P, P3. Okay, so, so as we've explained, we've got articular surface here, which would have articular cartilage on, um, which makes it nice and smooth and reduces that friction that, that's within the joint. And then on the back surface here, we have our flexor surface, which would have a fibrous cartilage covering, and that would just aid in the, in the smooth passage of the deep digital flexor tendon as it come down the back of the leg over this, over this joint, this dip or the it's still into phalangeal joint or the coffin joint and then a final insertion on the bottom of P3 in this semilunar crescent area. It's an elongated bone um, or should I say tr it's a transversely elongated bone and the word navicular is Latin and I'm led to believe that it translates to small boat. Um, the only interpretation that I can make of this looking like a small boat is the little shape, if you were to put a mast up here and a little sail on, it'd look like a little kid's drawn boat. Yeah, take that as you will. Um, so that's the navicular bone. We have our articular surface, our flexor surface, the facet for aiding in the articulation with P2. We have our perforated foramina for the, um, for the, for the blood supply. And we have our distal impar ligament roughened area for the distal impar ligament here. Um, and there's another ligament that will be involved in this bone and it is the um, suspensory of the navicular ligament which originates from the distal extremity of P1 and it comes down and it has a strong attachment on either end of this navicular bone here and it kind of forms a sling, suspensory of the navicular is like a sling that holds this bone in place uh, within that coffin joint. Um, so there are a few problems that are associated with this bone. Um, the very commonly known navicular disease and the other sort of symptoms of caudal hoof pain uh, or caudal heel pain um, that are associated with either this bone or its surrounded structures. Um, I will do a video all about navicular disease and navicular syndrome or caudal hoof pain um, in another video. So be sure to check that one out when that comes up. Um, I'll probably do that as part of my uh, pathology and common foot problem video series. So be sure to check that one out. Um, but yeah, so it does have its problems. Um, its main function is to act as a fulcrum. Or a fulcrum is, a, say, a pivot point um, for the insertion of the deep digital flexor tendon. So as the deep digital flexor tendon comes down the back of the leg, it comes over this navicular bone, it would be protected by the navicular bursa um, and it would travel down, so it travel down and underneath here and the actual navicular bone 
maintains a consistent angle or a relatively consistent angle of the deep digital flexor tendon for its attachment. So that even with a, a, a large range of motion, the actual insertion from the pivot point or from that fulcrum point to the semilunar crescent of P3 is maintained relatively um, the same throughout. So quite an important bone, but yeah, that's the navicular bone. An interesting little bone, plays quite an important role. Um, but as I said, we'll look at the common problems associated with this bone in another video. So, so thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, if you're interested in any other of my videos, I'm going to put a link to my Farrier vlog down here. So that's going to be a weekly Farrier vlog every Friday. Uh, be sure to check that out. Well, I'm working on a how-to series. So if you're interested in any of the how-tos, then do check this series out. I'm doing um, how to remove a shoe, how to treat an abscess. All them sort of videos are going to be in here. I've mentioned I'm going to be doing the uh, pathologies and common foot problems series, so be sure to check them out when they come up. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on another video. Cheers guys.